Hi everyone, this is Bob, and uh, I picked up this MFJ, uh, little MFJ Model 900 uh, small antenna tuner a couple, couple years ago, and I like it so much. I take it when I go uh, out operating someplace uh, with portable antennas and that, and with the QRP rig, go out to the park or something, or if I'm... Uh, if I'm traveling somewhere, I can take it along, take it to a relative's house or something with a little dipole antenna. I've got it connected to uh, 80 meter inverted V uh, outside. The inverted V is, uh, peak of the inverted V is at 80 feet, it's, for, it's 80 meters. And the uh, feed line is uh, 120 feet of, of RG6 75 ohm cable, the type the cable TV uses. And uh, anyways, uh, thing tunes really nice, and I've got. Uh, I wanted to show you this uh, MFJ antenna tuner, and I'm adjusting one of the capacitors here. You can see the SWR meter going down. You've got a 12 position switch here on the front for inductance and a variable capacitor for transmit transmitter and for the antenna. The coil is rather large and uh, I did have a couple of little problems with it. It was a used unit when I bought it at a ham fest and uh, one of the capacitors, you got one here and one here, one of the capacitors was rubbing. It was a plate near the back and I was able to take a uh, uh, exacto number 11 hobby knife, a small hobby knife, a pocket knife would work too and straighten out one of these little plates in the back was bent and rubbing. So we got that taken care of. And you can tell if it's doing that because when you adjust when you adjust the uh, the tuner, if the needle jiggles all over the place, you know you got a, a bad connection in that capacitor. They should tune nice and smooth like that. And uh, so this is rated at I believe 200 watts. I also made another change. You will notice here there's a ground wire soldered right there onto the coax connector. Comes over here and solders to this plate. It's actually a piece of tin sheet metal that uh, they have on either side. That's at ground potential. And I soldered those in from, you can see one on that one too right there, from the coax connector to that plate there. And I also used that knife to scrape really good on the coax connector there, edge of it, before I tried to solder to it. And you need to use a nice big uh, soldering iron. I used a Weller 8200 solder gun because you need quite a bit of heat. So I wanted to show you uh, that, that that is uh, something that's needed because if you look at this carefully, you see that the coax connectors are put in with uh, pop rivets. Now myself, I just don't think pop rivets make good electrical connections. Uh, they can get loose, so I, uh, I decided to put these little ground jumpers from here to this ground plate here, which is actually, like I say, it's like a piece of tin can is what it is. And there's one on the other side too. Uh, so I put a little one inch jumper from each of these to a good solid ground over here so that I know that the coax connectors are grounded properly. Now this has got the white, see it down in there, the white rotary switch. Those rotary switches are made to clean themselves when they're used. And if you don't use them enough, then they don't get cleaned properly. So if you, if you buy one of these, I would recommend that you just turn it right around like that. 25 revolutions forward. 25 revolutions backwards and those contacts will wipe themselves clean. You really can't get contact, contact cleaner to go into those plastic switches very well. You, it's kind of hard to get in there. There is a couple of little holes and you could spray a little bit of deoxid in there or something like that uh, and that might help. Uh, myself with the plastic switches like that I'm concerned about using any kind of a solvent because uh, 
it could uh, dissolve the plastic and make the switch hard to turn and maybe not work properly. So uh, I, I just don't put anything uh, on those. I just rotate them and rotate them and rotate them. Like I said, 25 turns one direction, 25 turns the other direction should do just fine. Now one thing I did notice here, I was using this on a portable antenna, a small portable antenna. I was trying to tune it up on uh, 17 meters and it would not tune no matter what I did. I thought I had a bad coax cable and this is the one I was using right here. It's exactly 24 inches long and it has a, uh, the thing I ran into was I needed a little more capacity from the input here from the input of the tuner to ground to get the tuner to work and I discovered that simply by switching cables I, I thought I had a bad cable I put another cable on and the cable I put on was 10 feet long and oh my golly the thing worked great but then I checked the cables and I found out there was nothing wrong with the cable I had on the first time that was two feet long and the only difference I can find between the two cables was that little short one had a, a uh, capacity of 76 picofarads. I measured the capacity with my capacity meter. So then I measured the 10 foot cable and it had a capacity of 256 picofarads. Now this particular condition occurred only on this one one antenna. It was a dipole, a small dipole that I had strung in the backyard and I was setting this up on the picnic table just to check it out for portable operation. So uh, you might keep that in mind that you might have to put in a longer cable, add some more capacity by putting in a longer cable, uh, and uh, that will help things. Now that's the cable that goes from your rig to the tuner. In this case it's running from the MFJ uh, antenna analyzer to the tuner. So that's it guys. I just wanted to show you this MFJ900. The MFJ901 is practically the very same tuner. So I think they're good tuners and I think they do a good job. And I just wanted to uh, show that to you and show you that crazy quirk that I ran into here. This was uh, yesterday that I ran into that. And when I did that and straightened it out and got it working, I thought, boy, that's a nice little tuner. I really should put that on YouTube. So that's it guys, the MFJ Model 900, Econo Tuner it's called, and then they have the MFJ 901, I believe the 901 is still made today and is virtually identical to this one. Uh, I think the only difference is the type of case it was put into. This was a case that they bought from uh, a case manufacturer and I think the case on the 901 is a case that they make themselves to cut cost. These I know are, are a rather expensive case. So uh, that's it. And uh, let me think if there's anything else. I can't think of anything else. Uh, but if you have another tuner that has this kind of a rotary switch in it, uh, remember when you're working with rotary switches, why uh, if, they're, if they're not working quite right or if you have doubts about them, like I say, I rotate them 25 times in each direction so that the contacts will wipe themselves clean. They do that with the rotary switches. That's it guys, 73's and good DX.